Hello, everybody. Take a look at this amazing disclaimer we have going on. We just want to make you sure that you know that our team loves you and we're here to support you in your journey and we're your biggest cheerleaders and also your honest people that love you enough to tell you the truth. We're coming today um, with training from all over, from Alabama, from way where it's freezing in the snow in Michigan, close to Michigan. And so we have different things going on. My name is Beth Brun. I am a coach and have been a client for going on three years now. Um, with it, uh, Emily, if you will pop up my before and after picture. So this is me. Yes, the girl in the green slime. I'm an elementary PE teacher. I got slime, didn't notice how big I was or how unhealthy I was, but I'm an emotional eater. My family has moved state to state. I don't know how many times we've moved from Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, back to Alabama. We're about to move back to Texas again. So my husband's job in oil and gas has transferred us a lot. So I did the program right after Halloween. I said, nope, not doing the candy for the kids. I got to do something different. So I started program. I did it straight for a whole month. My first month, I lost 20 pounds. Now, I'm a pretty tall girl. I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, I was pushing 200 pounds, 14, 16. That's a big girl. That's a big girl coming at you to talk to you or doing anything else. So with that, first month, I lost 20 pounds. After that, by month three, I lost 55 pounds. And all I did was a program. I ate the food. I drank the water. I did my lean and green. I didn't have cheats. Yeah, there's a couple of times, and we're going to talk about that in a little while, where people are trying to say, oh, it's just, it's not going to hurt you to take this in. I didn't. And if you think you have an excuse not to do this program, um, I have metal rods in my back because I had scoliosis as a teenager. So I have a bad back. I had breast cancer when my babies were two and one. So I've gone through breast cancer, did the whole ball thing, did all that. Then um, also my dad passed. So I'm like an emotional eater. Like I just ate and drank whatever is in sight because I don't know how to deal with my emotions. So I'm so grateful with this program, how to control my emotions now, how to live a healthier life. So that's two and a half years. That was this summer. And I'm just telling you now I've added the workout. <laughs> yes. We've gotten better, gotten better. We're only going to get better, right? You can move forward or back. I'm not moving back. There's no way. So that's my story. I'm going to pass it on to Greta. Thank you again, guys, so much for being here. Hi, everybody. I am Greta Robel, and I'm from Michigan. And I started this program because my husband actually started before me, and I was completely skeptical. And I actually told him that it wasn't going to work. Um, he always says that he gained my pregnancy weight. So when I was pregnant with twins, he gained 60 pounds. And I have a nutritionist, um, fitness background, like personal trainer. And he, we would meal prep, we would do all the things and he would lose 10 pounds and then gain it back. And it was just this constant yo-yo cycle. And he was sick of it. And he saw somebody on Facebook post about this program. And he was like, I'm going to try it. Didn't ask me, just ordered it. And when his box came, I was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? He was like, just give me a chance. And so he did his thing. He actually did it on his own because I didn't want anything to do with it. He lost 58 pounds in 60 days and I was completely floored. I was like, what are you doing? And so he, I read the back of the boxes of the food and I was like, these are full of vitamins and minerals. And like, what is this? So I got on the phone with his coach. His coach tried to tell me like, this is what it is. This is what it does. I told him I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it my way. He was like, please don't like, just give it 30 days. So I decided to give it 30 days. I ended up losing 13 pounds in 30 days, but more than that, I was this tired, tired mom. I was so tired. I was drinking like six cups of coffee a day. I was not eating right. I would starve myself all day and then binge at night. It was just not a good cycle. And so what this program has done for me is brought me structure. It has showed me the healthy habits that I need to maintain my weight loss now for two years. And it has given me so much energy and so much purpose. And so that is why I share what we do. And that is my story. And I'm going to pass it to Taylor. 
Okay, good morning, guys. Um, forgive me, I'm doing my best with my voice here. For those that don't know me, I may sound normal. To me, I do not sound normal at all. <laughs> um, but I have been coaching for um, going on four years now. I met these two amazing people, Greta and Beth, through my coaching journey. And y'all, this community is like no other. So I'm thankful for them above all. Um, when I first started this program, my husband actually um, was the one who introduced it to me. He had a friend who was doing it and was a coach and had lost like 40 pounds in two months. Craziness. And I was super skeptical um, simply because I had a 10 month old baby. I was still nursing. And so I told him that it's probably not a good idea for me. Um, but after talking with his coach, um, his coach told me that there was a nursing mother's program, which I was floored um, because for those of you who has, have nursed babies, you know that there's a fine line between nursing a child and trying to lose weight. You know, the calorie balance there is tricky. Um, and, you know, if you if you cross that line into not enough calories, it's really hard to get a milk supply back once you've done some detriment to that. So. Um, just in my first week, I realized that this was something that I could do to lose weight. My baby was nourished and fine, and I felt good. Um, I actually felt better than I did before I started the plan. So I basically shout this from the rooftops. Um, I'm a big proponent of breastfeeding and always have been since my first child. And so um, ma a mama's heart is is my heart. And so um, anyway, like I said, if, if I can help someone else with the nursing journey and just losing baby weight, I, I've never, to be honest, been extremely overweight, um, but I lost almost 25 pounds in seven weeks doing the nursing mother's plan. So um, I know what it feels like to carry extra weight basically all your life. I know what it feels like to do every diet under the sun and just feel like this is just how your body's meant to be. Um, and that's not, that's not true. Those are all lies. Um, you, can, you can change, there is hope. And I feel like we have the answer and that's why I do what I do, so. So that's our trio. Call ourselves the three amigos sometimes or the golden girls, cause we have one that comes in and out that we love her too. So we've built this community to help us encourage each other. And it took the program to connect us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been here. If you have somebody that encourages you in this program, in your journey, put a one in the chat. And how you do that, hit that little bubble chat button, and then you'll see where it puts everyone. Put a one in the chat. If you have, oh, look at all those ones. Amazing. That, that's half the battle, guys. Me and my husband did the program together. And he lost 125 pounds in six months. I mean, insane amount. Now, if you don't use this and this, it is easy to get it back. That's a life book and the healthy habits. You've got to learn the healthy habits because otherwise this is a diet. We don't do diets. This is life change. This is life changing for you. It has been for me. And I promise I will never go back. Um, so we're talking in our life book today because we are going through stuff to help you. That's why if your coach, always go back to your coach, ask him about the life book, ask him, Hey, what should I do in this step? We're here to help you, but your coach is your number one source. We're a great community. And if your coach doesn't know the answer, they can reach up and ask their coach or ask some of their coaching friends in the community. I mean, that's why it's such a great community to belong to. Now we're talking about today, pages 136 to 141, if you're following along with us. I'm first going to talk about the four questions, how to take a bad situation and diffuse the drama. Um, again, let's do this. Let's, let's test you on your Zoom. Raise your hand if you've been in a bad situation since you've been on program. Oh, let me do it too. Everybody, let's go to reactions. Raise your hand or give me a clap. Do something. Very look, look at all. I'm I'm doing and look at all those hands. If you can't, you can go to the top and do view and look at all those hands raised. 
everybody has some kind of drama going on. It It is. Oh, I see you, Mr. Pendle. Yes, yes, I know. You bring the drama sometimes, but we love you. Now, with this, so in this book right here, these little bubbles, this is what we're going over. So I'm just going to share a personal experience and you think in your head, what is going on with you? First thing, first little bubble is what is happening? What is the drama that's happening? Think right now, take a minute, think in your life, is it family? Is it friends? Is it your relationship with food? What is the drama going on right now in your life that is either going to help you stay on program or is going to blow up and you're going to go eat a Snickers after this? There's something. Something's going to trigger. Are you, or me, I'm a chocolate freak. Are you going to go like have a little Debbie that's full of chocolate or a chocolate bar or anything chocolate? Luckily, our program has some amazing chocolate things like I call it the Girl Scout Thin Mint Bar because it's so good. So go to that if you're going to have a, a craving. So my mind that I'm dealing with right now this week, and if you know anything about me, I move a lot, like a lot, because my sweet husband is in oil and gas and his company seems to move us a lot. But even we just moved back to Alabama. That's where I'm from. If you can't tell with a little bit of accent, um, we just moved back. So excited. I love the beach. The beach is my my joy. You need to see the pictures behind me. It's beach. We'll go to the beach anytime. Freezing, cold, rain. It doesn't matter. I love the beach. So we got to move back. So excited. Yay. All the families here. This week, we're moving back to Texas. I just found out. Like, like this week, I just found out. Of course, we had some family conversations. I can't be the only one not on board. That would make more drama. You know, I'm going to miss the beach. I'm going to miss my family. But I know God has us for and God has a plan for us. We prayed about it. We knew that. I don't know what your religion is, by the way. But we knew this is our answer for us. So I could. What is happening is that we're moving to Texas. My husband's leaving next week. I'm not leaving until school gets out. So what, what I wanted to happen is him stay here and help me pack everything. Yeah, but that never happens. I always pack everything. And I always go through everything. So I could easily revert back to, oh, I need a big glass of wine. I think I'm gonna have a glass of wine every night when I'm packing. Is that gonna be healthy habits? No. Is that gonna keep me in my best shape that I need to be and happy for the kids? No. Is that gonna make mama mean sometimes and I don't care what you're doing on your test or your schoolwork? Yes, that's what will happen. Like I know my cycle. I know my cycle of me getting depressed or me being by myself or like I had to set up, okay, I know this is going to trigger this. What are the steps I can do to overcome it? So as soon as he said, hey, we're going, I'm, I'm leaving this week. I already have a set plan. Okay, I'm going to pack this room up by then, this room up by then, and I'm not going to resort to alcohol. I'm going to put some music on. This girl loves to dance, by the way. I'll just put music on, and that'll be my saving grace where I don't feel like I, I, got, I can't dance and hold a glass of wine. That doesn't work anyway. So that's my way I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to overcome any triggers that might set it off. Sometimes family, love my family dearly. Sometimes family will trigger you. you. It's just so much drama. You love them. They're your family. You can't trade them for anything, but sometimes they will trigger you. My mom and me butt heads constantly. I love her, but we butt heads constantly. That could trigger me to be like, oh, it's just been a long day. It's been a long day and trigger me to go down the wrong, wrong way. So I want you to put in the chat while I'm talking, what are some things that are triggering you? What triggers you? What, uh, be honest here. This is just between us. It's like a lawyer thing. I'm not going to share your answers to anybody. Nobody else is going to either because we love each other. You know, what are your triggers that set you off? Boredom. Mm, that's a good one. Family, people. <laughs> I love it, Wayne. You should move to Texas. I'm telling you, it is a different world driving. People that drive in the left hand lane slow. This is an Alabama thing. I'm telling in Mississippi, Louisiana, they fly through because I've driven from Texas to Alabama. It is like, I, I'm not moving, get off my butt type thing. That is a thing. So Wayne, don't bring anything in the car that will trigger you to do something you're not supposed to do. Okay. Just like take that out there. All right. Oh, oh, consistent. Look at that. I love it, Sarah. Sometimes we don't have any consistency in our life. We've, this is what's bringing that consistency. I am this, I am, organization is not my friend. Busyness is my friend. Organization is not. That's something I struggle with. So I know if I have little pockets of organization, because I am busy, obviously I talk fast. 
if I have little pockets of organization, that's how I'm overcoming just like being overwhelmed with papers and being overwhelmed with the mess and being overwhelmed that I didn't get in touch with this person or this person or encourage this person. So um, this book is, it's, it's good. I'm telling you, you got it. Like Sonia said, you got to buy the book. It's, it's part of it. It's going to help. So I'm going to pass this on. I'm so proud of y'all for using the chat. Yes. So proud of you for raising your hand. Yes, because we're going to ask you to raise your hand a little while. And don't feel nervous. I mean, none of us are perfect. We all got flaws. We just want to hear you. We want to encourage you and we want to help you. So I'm going to pass this on to Greta. All right. So I love this topic because like Beth said, like this community has changed my entire journey. And without this community, I would probably not still be on this journey without having Taylor and Beth and my coach who always supports me and these habits of health, I would have fallen off. Like she said, it's not just a diet. It's about creating this micro environment, this bubble or shield around ourselves to help us nurture and grow what we have learned throughout this program. Because like Beth was saying, we can have distractions come up at any time that can take us off our journey. Um, my micro environment helps me to minimize my distractions. And I heard something a long time ago, and it still rings true to me today. People and friends only sabotage me if I give them control to. That is something that I have written down like everywhere because I have things come up every single day that are like, oh my gosh, like maybe I should have that glass of wine like Beth or let's just order pizza or those kind of things come up every single day, but I can choose how to respond to my situations. Nobody else has control over that. I also, in our life book on page like 137, it talks about our social consciousness. And I have become very aware of how I talk to people now. Before, if somebody came to me and had like different, a different opinion, or they say something like bad about the program or anything like that, I would get angry and like closed off and be like, no, there's no other way. Like it's my way or the highway pretty much, but having social consciousness and having a understanding of being in somebody else's shoes and putting yourself in somebody else's world or planet, as Dr. A always says, become curious because a lot of people don't not agree with you just to make you angry. They agree with you because they have different beliefs and they have a different why or a different need. And we have to become on this journey. We have to become curious about people and not always talk, but listen and really understand like why people are doing what they're doing. And I had this happen, like this doesn't have to just be about our health journey, but I had this happen today in my life where I, my kids are having, um, food, possible food allergies and we had them tested and we're waiting for the results. It's going to take about three weeks. And this three weeks is going to be really hard because I don't know if that's what's making them sick. But as a mom, I want to protect them. I want to cut those things out. And the people around me aren't agreeing with me because we don't have the cold, hard proof. But as a mom, I'm like, I want my kids to not eat that. And my father-in-law takes my kids to bowl, to bowl every Saturday. And he wants to take them to pizza like he does every Saturday. And I've asked him very nicely not to and all this stuff. And there was going to be a big blow up today because I did not feel heard. And I felt like he was trying to do something to be angry, to make me angry. And instead, I took a step back and I was like, they don't get to see their grandpa very often. And he's finally doing something with them. Let me just try to understand the situation, understand where he's coming from. This is their routine, but ask him to kindly change the routine a little bit just to make me feel better and make him feel better instead of blowing up about the situation. So we came up with a solution and everything's going to be fine, but that's just a way that I could have blown up the situation and not been in my social consciousness, not taken a step back. Stop, challenge, and choose. That is something we can use even in our conversations, not just when we're picking up something to eat. So that is just a situation and an example. Um, but we can just be curious and find out what other people are feeling. And that's one way we can improve our relationships. Another way is you are 
most like the five people you surround yourself with the most. If you show me your friend list, you will show me your future. And it is so true because when I first started this journey, my friend list was not great. My friends liked to drink every weekend, sometimes on the weeknights. They liked to eat pizza and French fries and do all the things. And it was always this big party, which you guys, I still like, I like to party, but I don't have to do it as much as they're doing it. And I don't have to always feel bad if I'm not partaking in the drinking or the whatever. So what they have you do in the book is list your five friends and your five accomplices. Your accomplices are the people who hinder or hurt your journey. The five friends are the people you like that lift you up and keep you going, which I would say Beth and Taylor are one of my five friends that keep me going. So think about who are the five people in your life that you want to be surrounded with and go out and make those relationships and build those relationships with them. This community is a massive reason for me still being on this journey. And like, I cannot say that enough. People in your corner is powerful. There is nothing like the power of people being in your corner. And the more you can be in a powerful, like a positive influence to other people, you will create a ripple effect. And that's what we need in this world right now. This world has so much negativity. And if you just help one person a day, even um, Taylor had said, help a coworker without being prompted, get active with a neighbor. You don't have to say like, do this program with me. Let's go for a walk. Join a small group and make new friends. There are so many people in this world looking for community. You can start a group or you can probably join one in your community. Okay. Think right now in your head, five people, five people that you just love, five people, only five, because you got your hand up anyways. Are those five people, are they part of your core group that help encourage you? Are they those people that tear you down? I want you to, and you might have to have an honest talk with those five people that are in your circle. You might have to say, look, I love you to death, but either I need your help in doing this because it's going to change my life, or you're not going to be one of my five people. It's going to get down to four. You might have to have that real talk with them. If they're your true friend, they'll step up to the plate. They'll be there to encourage you. If they're not, they'll come back around when they see how awesome you're living so this week, I want you to come up with five people in your life that are going to encourage you. It might be your coach. Always go back to your coach. If you got questions about the program, if you're having a hard day, you're struggling, that's what your coach is for. I tell my clients all the time, I am like your lawyer. You can tell me anything. I promise it stays between us because I want to help them take another step forward. I want to help them get past this obstacle or things that throw them off program. What's your triggers? There's one, one lady, I love her to death. She's a teacher. She's like, Beth, I'm going to need you to text me every night because I'm going to want to have that glass of wine after teaching these crazy middle school hormonal children. And I'm like, all right. So we got a system. I text her. I'm like, how was your day? And I, I try to do it right after school. And I'm like, okay, what are you going to have tonight? What is your dinner? What is your lean and green? Throw away the wine if you stop and bought some or your husband did, you know, like I'm there to help her push over. And I'm like, you need to get on the phone with me. We'll talk. Let your, and I will do that with any of my people. Some of my clients, they get going and they think they got it. They're Mr. Independent. But if they're not ready to reach back up to me, it's hard for them to maintain it. Like reach up to your coach today, reach up to them, let them know what's going on. Let them know what your struggles were. Like Sandra, I hope your coach knows all the obstacles you've already come over. I hope that they know of your battles that you're having every happy hour, how you're able to help. Like they want to be there to help you. Tony, same with you, all your social stuff. You call Taylor when you're like, hey, we're fixing to go to this thing and I'm going to need your help. You know, that's what your coaches are for. Guys, I would not have been a coach or even done this program without the awesomeness of my coach. We are going through this book, guys. This is what we're doing. We're going through to help you have a healthier life. This is not a diet. This is a, a change you're making for the better. Go be that life today, guys. Go encourage somebody. We love you. Thank you for being here. My heart's to you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.